I remember there were many friends of mine at Planned Parenthood where I'd long been a supporter and and uh, a worker behind the, the scenes. And uh, among other abortion rights groups, not to mention many feminist friends of mine, there were many of my friends who felt that it was sort of quaint and after the fact that I should be writing an historical novel uh, about abortion set in a period of time in the 30s and 40s when that procedure was illegal, unavailable, uh, and never safe. Uh, so long after the fact of Roe versus Wade, uh, these people were talking to me as if the abortion rights struggle was already in the 80s when I was writing the Cider House Rules. It was a done deal. It was a fight that was won. It was a fight that was over. Um, I had no idea when I was writing Cider House that the entrenched resistance to a woman's right to an abortion, I had no inkling that it would be worse today uh, in 2012 than it was um, at the time I was writing The Cider House Rules, and that the reaction against the film that was made of The Cider House Rules, which was released in the uh, end of two, uh, 1999 and early 2000, um, would be uh, reacted to with um, uh, uh, more vocal protests than anything that greeted the book when it was published um, in 1985. Uh, things have gotten worse on that front. I can't say the same for the so-called sexual suspect subject. I can't say that um, uh, the struggle for gay rights and gay acceptance um, has gotten worse than it was at the time I wrote The World According to Garp, um, which is a novel about intolerance of sexual differences. Uh, I can't say it's worse now uh, than it was in the 70s when I wrote Garp. It's not a parallel subject to abortion rights quite. But the resistance to how many gains have been made in the world of gay rights and how many strides forward toward openness and acceptance have been made by LGBT groups everywhere, the resistance to those groups and to those rights is still here. It's still with us. Um, the objections, the animosity against uh, gay marriage is unfathomable to me. How insecure do heterosexual couples need to be to feel that their kind of marriage needs to be defended from gay marriage? How does gay marriage threaten heterosexual couples? What do they have to be so insecure about? I suppose something that instigated my desire to write in one person uh, came from that feeling.